Welcome to the Zadok Podcast, where we explore the scriptures through creativity and tell stories of beauty from the ashes. Come and join us on this pilgrimage as we seek the Father's heart through Yeshua, the way, the truth, and the life. Shalom friends and welcome to the Zadok Podcast. It's my privilege. Uh, today I'm not with Carmen, but I've got a special guest for today's show. His name is Yaku Bakker. Now, Yaku is a husband and a father to four children. He's also an adventure seeker. And Yaku has a passion for men's ministry. Yaku joined Camp David in 26, 2006 and started leading Camp David in 2010. Yaku also still spearheads Camp David today and is passionately dreaming and working with God to impact men's lives. He has also served as a pastor at a local church for three years. And recently, Yaku did a discipleship training program, reaching out internationally with his family. Welcome, Yaku Bakker. Thank you so much, Edgar. Yaku, it's so great to have you, and I've known you for quite a while. I think maybe it's 10 years or more, maybe more than 10 years now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably more than 10, more years, than 10 years. Oh, man, yeah, we've come a long way, and it's such a privilege to have yeah. you on the show. Um yeah, it's such an honor. It's my honor and my privilege. So thank you for, for joining us tonight. Now, the first thing I'd like to ask you, Yaku, is for people that don't know, just maybe explain to them what is Camp David? Um, Edgar, firstly, thank you for, for having me. It's a privilege from my side as well. Um, what is Camp David? Camp David is a men's ministry that focuses on um, godly masculinity. Therefore, our slogan discover your heart, restore your masculinity. Um, we focus on, on men of all ages, um, starting from high school until as old as they come, probably. <laughs> um, and we, focus, we do real high-intensity um, camps, men's camps on weekends. And then we do outreaches that we call hardcore outreaches, where we go to the most um, dangerous and hardest nations to spread the gospel. We have men's groups weekly at this stage, three per week in Pots of Um, So we focus on, you know, talking to men and teaching men what is toxic mas- masculinity, the way that the world tells us we should live as men and breaking that down and learning um, what the word of God says about um, what a man should be, a man like David was, you know, a man of the God's own heart. So we focus on on helping men with with issues, daily issues, um, and then really restoring men in who God made them to be, finding a godly um, purpose and living a sacrificial life for the kingdom of God. Um, in short, I think that's that will be my definition of Camp David. Wow, man, that's such a commendable and honorable calling on your life and also your ministries. Um, uh, um, your ministry so yeah yes I, I just really honor that and I, and I can see God really working through you guys I mean that's that's probably some of the most difficult ministry there is out there um, Yaku something that, that I've been wondering is just where does this passion for, for men's ministry come, come from where where was it first cultivated or why are you so passionate about men's ministry um, Edgar let me tell a little Part of my testimony in this, um, I grew up in a, in a pretty good home. I went to church with my parents, but I never really knew Jesus personally. Um, after school, I went to the USA to work for a year, came back, worked at a normal job, um, was trying to search for my identity, you know who I really am, I'm in all the wrong places, you know, like any young man should do, find himself. And then, of course, I found it at the wrong places, um, doing some things that I'm ashamed of now. But, of course, God forgave me and restored me. Um, but I had a really hard, hardened heart. Um, and I was, you know, I played rugby and all those things that's probably commendable as a man. But I didn't know who I really was. You know? And then December 2003, um, I had this revelation of who Jesus really were. And we, you know, we, we really is, and it changed my life completely. But I didn't know what what, what it meant to live out love. It wanted me to, so I, I still had this hardened heart, and um, was hard necked, 
uh, all of those type of words. And then I met this older guy that became a mentor and sort of a father in my life, um, Jacques van Vieren. And he took me through Camp David, introduced me into some good fellowship groups. And um, with him you know, leading me into what God created me to be as a man, I could actually discover what masculinity, masculinity really is. Got a lot of healing in my heart. I've got a new way of thinking, you know, of course, that's still in the process of happening as well in sanctification, but um, it started there in a big way. And I got so much healing and restoration in my heart that I just knew I can't just let this um, pass me by. So I got, I become, I became part of that ministry. Back then came David, but Jock is the leader. And the more I, I discovered um, who I was as a man, um, the more I just knew I had to help other men in this process. And of course, God had a hand in, hand in this. He knew exactly what he was busy doing in my life, although I didn't quite yet know. <laughs> but um, it ended up that I was next in line. When, when Jacques moved back to Namibia, I was next in line. I was like a, a second son in his house. And um, I took over. And, you know, the rest is history. Of course, I had... A, a lot of lessons to learn um, because I, I lacked the experience. But, you know, God is faithful. He taught me the right things. He, he sent the right people along the along my way. Um, we had good community, good brotherhood that we still focus on a lot. And all those things, you know, keys in my life um, brought me to a place where I'm more convinced ever now that um, this is where I should be. This is what God called me to. To walk with men, I'm really passionate about it because I I know where I came from, what God has done in my life, and um, what men need. And most men struggle with mostly the same things. Um, God just works differently with each man. So, this, the experience I've got, um, I've gotten over this last 17 years, is pretty amazing. Um, this is year number 17, which is pretty exciting. Um, but I think that's where my passion comes from. And, that's probably why God gave me three boys and one girl, you know, <laughs> that I can um, depart, impart what I've learned into them in discipleship mm. while they grow up. And hopefully, God willing um, and them willing, they'll take over one day from me and do even greater things that I did, you know. Mm. So I think that's where my passion can, comes from, from mm. having been restored and healed and wanting to help other people, other men in the same process. Wow, oh, that's so powerful. It almost feels like um, if you're going through a specific challenge or specific maybe sin or something that's shameful, then when you overcome that specific challenge, it's almost like our Father gives you a key to unlock other yes. people that are struggling with that same sin or that's got that same challenge. Yeah, yeah. And and I Absolutely. think it's definitely evident in, in your testimony that you know with that masculinity struggle or who you are, your identity – that Abba Father gave you a key and now you're actually restoring other people's identity or helping them with Abba Father to restore their identity in Him. So that that's just awesome. Um, You touched on, you know, that phase where you're really struggling with some uh, sins and, and shameful things. And that, that leads me to my next question. What do you see as some of the threats that men face when it comes to biblical masculinity? <laughs> Well, I think um, it, the biggest one that I that I I'd mentioned is that we've been discipled by the world all our lives. You know, we think the way the world thinks, and not the way um, God thinks. Or we don't have the mind of Christ, which means we don't get our heads in the Bible enough, in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. um, so that toxic way of being a man that the world teaches of us, or has been teaching us all this time. We're so stuck in our frame of our mind, frame of mind that we struggle to get out of it. And part mm -hmm. of it, of course, I'd say is um, your wound that you got from your father. Um, there's no perfect father on this earth. There's only one perfect father who lives in heaven, and that's that's Yahweh, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that's um, the triune God. Okay, and um, that's the biggest thing because we can't relate to our dads in a healthy heart, a healed heart, 
we struggle to, to relate to God as our father. That's one of the biggest threats. And that's why um, the biggest thing we focus on in Camp David is getting guys in, into a healthy heart concerning his earthly dad and then making sure he's restored in that. And then the second thing I'd say is probably sexual sin. Um, that's the two biggest threats I have encountered against godly masculinity. Um, and sexual things, you know, I don't even know where to start with this. Um, I believe that if, even if you talk about um, homosexuality, that um, comes mostly from a father wound. Because a boy is supposed to be affirmed from his dad. And when a father is absent or abusive or even um, not at there at all, um, there's a lack for a boy to be affirmed that he's going to make it one day, that is good enough. And that makes boys um, yearn for, for a type of affirmation from other men. And that's why they yearn to be with other men. And of course, I think the enemy um, bends that into making it a love affair with other men, where I think the second place where you can affirm your masculinity is from brothers, friends, guys that you can trust and you can live life with without making it romantic. So that's just a, a side note. Mm -hmm. But I'd say that's the two biggest threats um, in being discipled by the word of God rather than by the world. Um, and of course, um, group pressure, peer group pressure, mm -hmm. is also a bad thing these days. And even, you know, my, my boys are in school now, and sometimes I call it a prison <laughs> because they have to go there. Bad things happen there, and then we have to um, disciple it out of them when they get home. And it's a tough process. You know, all of us are busy. It's not a joke. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have to decide what's important in this life. And for us, we decided that our generation, our lineage, and um, our boys, our kids will have to be first after God's kingdom. So wow. that's one another big thing is be a good pressure. And of course, social media, oh man, <laughs> social media in plain English just sucks. <laughs> um, I mean, most of my boys' friends have phones already with oh, no... <laughs> No security on it to block them from seeing anything they're not supposed to see. So that's also a bad thing. And I mean, there's many more I can think of, but maybe we should stop there. Those four on their own um, oh, is man. totally, totally threatening biblical masculinity as God created it. Yeah, I, I think, uh, as you said, one of the big ones, or the big one for me, I think is just restoring biblical sexuality. Um I just want to ask, is there maybe a specific testimony that comes to mind when you think of someone's um, sexuality that's been restored, um, someone that's maybe been struggling with pornography or um, homosexual yeah. thoughts or something like that, that that's maybe come through your ministry or through Camp David specifically? So, Edgar, um, there's been many, many, many of those men coming through our, through our ministry. Um, even through my life, you know, um, Young men yearns to be fathered, you know, like any man yearns to be fathered. Mm. Um, but they struggle to understand that God wants to father us. And therefore, they turn to older men, as to mentors first. And what I've seen in, in that process of mentoring, they get to a place where they can hear God's voice, follow God's leadership. And then God can father them without a mentor in their lives. So it's a bit of a process. Um, there's a few, oh, there's so many testimonies, but let me, let me talk about what I experienced in Namibia. In, in, um, in Ventuk, they, they, they bought this house and made it a school for all the problem kids from all the big schools, you know? So it's not a school that you probably want to go to to minister. <laughs> it's all the hardcore, <laughs> um, bad boys and girls, mostly boys, but some girls as well. So we went there once. And we were praying. We, we took the boys into the garage. We are praying with them, um, asking them some questions, trusting God for breakthrough. And then this one grade eight boy came to me and he whispered something into my ear. I couldn't exactly hear him. I took him to the side um, 
he worshipped it again, and I heard him say, I've got feelings for other boys. So I immediately knew I couldn't, I couldn't handle this in this garage with the other boys there. So I took him to the side, I mean, to a classroom where we were alone, and um, asked him some questions, you know, just probing, facilitating him. And it got to the, to the, the, issue, the core issue where his dad was absent. Firstly, abusive, and then totally absent. And his mom and his dad um, divorced, and he had no father. And I exactly, and I, I exactly in that moment knew um, what God wanted to do. You know, I've, I've seen this so many times. <clears throat> so I just started to give him some truth about God as father and um, what God's heart as father is towards him. You know, all the truth that the, the word talks about. And I could see it struck his heart so so deeply and so loving you know that's what god wants to do he wants to love us mm. <laughs> into healing and restoration and um started praying with him and immediately started manifesting and um of course god is powerful then he got delivered um, radically and once mm. we stopped praying he said all those feelings are gone radically gone and god god restored him and that's, that's the thing I see most of the times in, is that that deeper wound sometimes, and I've, I'd probably say almost half of the times, almost 50%, um, is some of uh, a possession of some kind because the wound is so deep, the trauma is so deep. And many times it's a quick deliverance, and especially with the young guys because the roots are not deep yet. And then... Um, the feeling is gone, but the habit needs to be broken. So then, of course, we put them in community with other men and take them deep into the Word of God, you know, to get them into a safe environment where they can, can be transparent, where they can trust other men and together delve into God's Word and get the truth about who God made them to be. So that's probably one of the, the testimonies I can share. There's others as well. Some more hardcore, you know, deliverance mm -hmm. isn't always a, a pretty picture, <laughs> but I've never seen a guy not be restored once you get to the root of um, and the lies of, of what stands against him as a man. Wow, that's awesome, man. <laughs> that, that's, that's so edifying. And, uh, and I think, yeah, I hope that encouraged the listeners. I, I think... Um, some someone out there needed to hear that that there is hope that there is there is a, a place where people can be delivered if they just open up themselves and just trust god and um i think the most important thing the first step is maybe just to admit you know that you have that sin or you have that problem whether it is homosexuality or uh, whether it's pornography or masturbation or whatever um and to confess your sins you know as the word says and and i think uh, once once that's in the light, Abba, Abba opens the door for, for that deliverance. And that's so powerful. And I think you mentioned yes, a lot of things. Yeah. You, men you mentioned um, <clears throat> to get the guys in the word more often. You mentioned um, mentorship and you mentioned like a fellowship of men or surrounding you with other men, godly men that walks with Abba. And, and that actually leads to my next question. Um, what parameters can men put in place to achieve their full potential as a man of God? Um, well, definitely, you know, connecting with God who created them is, is probably the best one, if number one. Wow. Um, I mean, if you don't connect with God as as your king and your father and Jesus as your brother, you know, and the Holy Spirit within you that guides you through this life and that can show you <laughs> the deceit of the enemy, um, and take you into the truth of God, there's no way you're going to make it. There's no way you're going to be able to stand strong as a man of God. So definitely connection with God, relationship, deep relationship with God is number one. Number two is um, a strong community. Um, I mean, we actually focus more on families these days in our ministry, but we our, our focus is from a men's side, the men's side into the family. Um, but even as a married man, it's absolutely crucial that you have men around you that walks with you, that um, keeps you strong and 
you keep them strong, it keeps you accountable, it um, helps you discover the truth, discover who you were meant to be, and all those kinds of things. So those two um, is uh, the most important. And of course, number three is not to be passive. I'd say being active mm-hmm. and um, being active in God's kingdom in, um, you know, being sent in expanding his kingdom is also a big thing. A passive man is really a man that's worth nothing. We always say we define masculinity as um, rejecting passivity, taking responsibility and leading courageously. And then we sometimes say bad things happen because good men do nothing. So it's almost like the the great commandment, you know, love the Lord, the Lord your God and then your neighbor as yourself. So I think in those three key param- parameters, a man of God can stand strong. And I'm even thinking of Ephesians 6 where Paul speaks about the armor of God and he says, um, stand therefore, be strengthened in in God, in the power of his might. Mm. You know, we can't be men without God in our lives. There's no way. Amen. We'll be weak men and toxic men that just destroys other people and women and kids. So I think those three will be my main three that I'd give someone who asks for keys mm. into godly masculinity. Oh yeah, that's 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 powerful. Um, Yaku, my, my last question is, what is something that you've learned personally over the last year and um, of yourself? What have you learned of yourself? And secondly, what have you learned of the Lord? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I think that <laughs> if I can be really honest, the biggest thing I've learned, well, is to unlearn something I've learned. You know, that's the, <laughs> I've, um, I've been taught way back that, um, you know, you build a ministry around one guy, he makes the decisions, he calls the vision, and everybody follows him and just do all the work. But what I've learned in the last few years is that, that through discipleship is to, to disciple men to grow past yourself, you know, to raise men up, to walk beside you and even in front of you um, and to not to stand alone. I mean, there's so many great leaders that's fallen these days. It can, mm. um, it's so sad to me to see that because it's, it gives a, a, a bad image of who God is and who his body is supposed to be. So I'd say that's the biggest thing, that um, I'm not the, the main guy. Jesus is the main guy. I mean, he's the general of his army. Mm. I'm just one of the troops, maybe with some rank, but not much. <laughs> and um, I'm trying to get men with me. And I think we're succeeding because God is really busy with great things within our ministry. Um, our leadership team, that's about 150 guys all over South Africa, is growing really strong and I'm not even doing everything anymore. Mm. Um, So that's the biggest thing to get guys to walk with me, um, to help me with big decisions, um, help help me make, not make bad decisions, help me with my blind spots um, and walking together, same ranks or higher or low, whatever, just doing what God wants us to do. So not building around one man. That's the biggest thing I've learned. And I think the second one that's probably just as important is that even in a men's ministry, my family should be part of what we do. Because all men at some time get wives or have wives and kids and needs ministering, needs help, needs fellowship, um, community. And as a family, we can do so much more than only me running running all the day and they were staying at, a, at the house at home, you know? So I think those two will be my, my biggest le- lessons. Of course, there's sacrifice, sacrifice um, that I can throw in there and sacrificial love and um, generosity. And there's many more, but those two, I think is what, what is the biggest ones that hit my heart these last few years. Wow. Thanks. Thanks, Jaco. Yeah, th- this I think is going to be so beneficial for the listeners, not only for men, but I think also for, for women, um, just to understand uh, their husbands or uh, the men in their lives uh, a, bit, a, a little bit better. 
So I think this is going to be so edifying for them as well. Um, Yaku, I just want to thank you. Thank you for your time. I know you've got a busy life and a, and a big family. Um, so I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for taking the time. And I know this will bless so many of our listeners out there. Thank you, Eka. Thank you for having me. It's been a privilege. We should do this again. <laughs> And yes, maybe definitely. I'll see you guys. I know there's so some much more. <laughs> we have to yeah. do this again. <laughs> maybe I'll see some of you guys on our camps or yes. some of our groups. It'll be lovely. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah, uh, brothers and sisters, you're welcome to check out a, a blog post. I'm also going to post a link in the description of this podcast that Yaku wrote a while ago on the Zadok blog. Um, if you want to learn more about uh, toxic masculinity versus biblical masculinity. And yeah, remember to tune in next week on the Zadok podcast. In him, we live and move and have our being. Shalom. Thank you for joining us on the Zadok Podcast. For more info, blogs, music, or other creative content, visit our website at zadok.com.